Hi, I'm Miriam, co-founder and COO of Keto Chow. I'm Chris, also a co-founder, president, and the technical guy behind Keto Chow. If you're brand new to Keto Chow, it's a nutritionally complete meal designed to make doing a keto diet easy. We also have some electrolytes that are amazing for everyday use and for keeping the dreaded keto flu away. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the little bell icon for daily updates on all our Keto Chow happenings. Thank you so much for joining us. We love having you with us on our journey. And normally we'd be doing a live stream right now, mm -hmm. but we are indisposed at the moment. That's right. So, so we, go oh, ahead. No, I, I was just going to say, <laughs> so we're taking this opportunity to go through and do a couple of videos um, talking about some of the, the questions that people frequently ask. Mm -hmm. So today we want to talk about protein, maybe hitting your protein goals, talking about how to supplement protein with keto chow, just some other things that we've been thinking about and talking about and that have been brought up. Um, we know that Two Crazy Ketos did, has doing a program, program this month with uh, Bronson mm -hmm. or April. Yeah. yeah. This month, well, there's this it might month, be this month. We're, not, we're not sure. Um, but anyway, it's focusing on getting your proper protein. We've actually been talking about this a lot with uh, Keto Chow lately. We realized that a lot of people are afraid of protein. And after, you know, getting to know Dr. Barry and Maria Emmerich and, you know, a lot of other people in the keto space, uh, we're probably not hitting the protein goals that we need to. And so we're recalculating and, you know, community. different things. And so I think that people are afraid of protein and we don't want that to happen. But also with Keto Chow, you get 26 grams of protein per shake, but that may not be enough for everyone to have the right proteins. And so we wanted to talk to you about like calculating your protein macros and where good resources are. Yeah. Well, and a lot of this goes back to um, in the bad old days when keto was kind of starting off and there wasn't a lot of science um, out there. Uh, a lot of people were concerned that if they had too much protein, that your body would convert it into glucose. Um, there's a process in your body. It's called gluconeogenesis, but you don't need to know that. Mm -hmm. um, when you're fasting, we'll, we'll just go from broke. If, if you're fasting, you're not consuming any thing, mm -hmm. nothing at all. There are certain cells of your body that have to have glucose. They won't run mm -hmm. on anything but glucose. Which is part of the reason why people say you have to have glucose so you can't do keto. Yeah. Um, but that's not necessarily true. Our ancestors would have died. Yep. You need glucose, <laughs> but your body has a way to make the glucose that's needed. So that's, go ahead. That's exactly correct. Yeah. And so gluconeogenesis. Um, it can make your body, specifically, specifically your liver, can make glucose out of a couple different things. Um, it can use protein. Mm -hmm. It can also use glycerol. You may have heard of these things called triglycerides. Um, when you have fats, typically you're going to have a fat molecule and then another one and then another one. There's three of them. And it's going to be joined by a glycerol backbone. Looks like a little trident, I guess, or a comb. I don't know. There's three different things. On. Anyway, <laughs> um, that glycerol can be used by your body as a source of energy. And it will often use it to make glucose, among other things. Um, and so when people, uh, they used to be really worried about too much protein getting turned into glucose and raising your blood sugar. Mm -hmm. I think some of this also goes with if you, if you were to not eat anything, your, well, your body is not going to have a rise in blood sugar from eating anything. Yeah. If you are to eat, well, let's we'll say you go get a tablespoon and you take a big giant thing of coconut oil and you eat it. Mm -hmm. your blood sugar will not go up at all, period. Um, if there's stuff in that coconut oil along with it, besides the fat, well, maybe it would go up. Um, if you eat some ground beef or a steak, mm -hmm. there will be a blood sugar response to you eating that. It's, it's not even up for discussion. It just will happen. Some of that is due to the amino acids. Some of it is due to your body going, oh. Food? 
And some mm -hmm. of that is actually your body releasing glucose that's stored. Mm -hmm. um, and then that rise in glucose will trigger an insulin response. So a lot of people were worried that too much protein will raise your blood sugar, will cause your body to have more glucose, will set you back on a ketogenic diet. Um, back in, I believe it was 2018, uh, Dr. Benjamin Bickman at the Breckenridge, the Low Carb Breckenridge uh, Conference, mm -hmm. he gave a presentation. Um, I can't remember the name of it. You know what? Here, what we're going to do. It's I'm, glucagon. It's, it's, well, it was about glucagon. Here, I'm going to. Uh, bah, bah, bah. How are you going to find it? I am actually going, what I'm going to do. Oh is I'm going to go to keto chow calculator. Okay, this and page right are you here. sharing now? I am sharing. If you're on our keto chow website, you go why chow, how to prepare keto chow, and calculating macros on keto. That'll actually take you to this page that we're mm -hmm. on right now. Um, at the top is a very handy calculator um, that's, it's on the preparation page as well. But if you keep scrolling, you've got this section, macros on keto, how much protein, fat, and carbs should you have? Mm -hmm. And in it, it talks about carbs are an upper limit. Don't go above this amount. Yeah. You want to hit your protein goal. I wrote this a while ago, and I'm so happy because it's it's true. <laughs> it's still true, and mm -hmm. all the signs I've seen, and this is what we're talking about right now, says that you have to get this much protein. It's a goal. You know, if you go over it, it's not a big deal. Um, here where it talks about there's a thing in your body that can turn protein into glucose, but it's demand driven. Mm -hmm. When your body needs glucose, it will make glucose. If your body has the raw materials to make glucose, that doesn't mean it's going to go, well, I guess I'm going to make glucose. It's not how it works. Um, so as long as you're keeping your carbohydrates low, your insulin will be low. And eat too much protein is not something to be concerned about. Too little protein is. Mm -hmm. And the, So here we have Dr. Benjamin Bickman. Insulin versus glucagon, the relevance of dietary protein. And this presentation is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. He gets a little bit into the weeds, but not much. Pretty technical. It is technical. But he, he is talking about, well, the whole point of, his, of this presentation is that if you look at calories in, calories out, the calories out part of that equation is far more complex than anybody could ever account for. And so it's not a really good equation to talk about calories in and calories out and just call it good. Um, because our body has ways of burning calories that are actually really interesting, um, specifically there's a thing called brown adipose tissue, and he talks about the, the decoupling of all this stuff. It does get into it, but as part of this presentation, he goes into the details about how you don't need to worry about too much protein, especially on a low carbohydrate diet if you're not eating stuff. Um, then later on in, in, on this page right here, it talks about how fat is more variable. That's the lever that you're going to play with. Mm -hmm. um, it being so variable is one of the reasons why we make sure that the fat is not part of the keto chow mix mm -hmm. so that you can use the one that suits you best and the amount that suits you best. Yep. Um, and then get enough salt. And there's more information down here below. But so yeah. what we're getting at right now, so we're establishing that you need to get protein, right? Right. And you need to get enough protein. Don't be afraid of protein. Um, our friend Bronson Dant, uh, with the two crazy keys, I'm wearing their shirt today. Mm -hmm. I stole it from <laughs> Miriam bought it for me for Christmas. Um, they are talking about, you know, if you feel kind of snacky and you feel like you absolutely have to get a snack. Mm -hmm. 
what do they want you to snack on? Snack on protein. Yeah. Lean protein to be specific. Mm -hmm. um, Miriam, well, we were talking about this this morning about uh, pork rind. Didn't you say it gives you like heartburn or something? Oh, gas. It gives oh, me okay. gas. I really like snacking on pork rinds. I could snack on pork rinds, but I can eat like maybe 10 tops. Yeah. The problem with snacking is you really don't want to snack if at all possible. Yeah. But as they were saying, if you really need, if you need to eat something, um, having a lean protein is a really good option. Um, and we'll get more into some of those and ways that you can supplement your protein. Because as Miriam said, um, keto chow is like anywhere from 23 to 27 grams of protein per serving. Mm -hmm. And for most people, that's not going to be enough. Yeah. An another reason, well, before we go on further, um, another reason why some people think they don't need as much protein as they do is because if you use a tracking app like Chronometer. Yep, any tracking app, really. Yeah. They all have the protein not quite as high as you maybe need it. And by not quite as high, she means like 70 or 60% of what it should be. Yep. Sorry, you can go ahead. Not quite as high. <laughs> If you Google how much protein do I need, you will get such a wide variety of recommendations. Yes. It, it really does go all over the place. Um, Bronson recommends, um, he's recommending uh, a gram of protein per pound of lean body mass, which is almost twice as much as some people recommend. Um, if that is a weird thing and you're kind of like, I don't understand that. Um, another way to think of it is, what's your goal weight? Mm -hmm. Eat that many grams of protein a day. Which, that's kind of a lot. Yeah, really. so, I mean, let's say that you're a five foot two lady and your goal weight is 110 pounds. That's 110 grams of protein. Most keto calculators mm -hmm. will recommend for that sort of person. Like 60 or less. Or less. A uh, chronometer, which is a great tracking app, their keto calculator, don't, please don't use it. Yeah, we had to, so what I did was I figured out mine and then I entered it in by hand. Yeah, there's a manual do. entry that you can do. Um, I think chronometer might recommend like 70 grams for that six foot two lady. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what, five foot two lady. Wow. Um, if you are six a- Six foot two and 135 pounds, yeah. 110 pounds, she'd fall over. <laughs> Let's say you're a bigger guy and maybe your your goal weight is 170. 170 grams of protein is a lot. That's a lot. And yeah, that's that's like 80 grams more protein than what you would get from eating three keto chows a day. Mm -hmm. So doing, and, and that's another reason why we don't recommend to people that they use keto chow as their sole source of nutrition. You can. Mm -hmm. It's designed so that you can. The problem is it's it's a little hard to get the right amount of protein for everyone. So we do kind of err on the side of, well, this would be a good amount to start with. Um, but from there, you're probably going to need to go more. So, if, so let's say you're a big guy. You want, you need 170 grams of protein a day. Well, how are you going to get that? But first... Let's figure out how much you really need. Yes. So the calorie calculator that we recommend is Maria Emmerich's. And hers is interesting. She's, she's worked on it for a number of years with a lot of calculations, with a lot of, you know, trial and error. But it's on our calculator page. We yeah. link over to it. So here we go. So, yeah, if you're on that, that page just before how to use the calculator, there is a link to it right there or if you're just on the how to prepare keto chow and you scroll 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 here's this link right here it's the same thing and there it is the keto calculator we actually we put Maria's keto calculator in front of that but this one's really good because like Miriam was saying it has a lot of knowledge that Maria has acquired over years mm -hmm. and for that matter her awesome husband um, and it's all kind of condensed into here. So do you want to tell people how to use it? 
or more about it rather? Yeah, yeah. So we've actually noticed uh, quite a few things here. So if you just go, you can do imperial metric, you put in your weight, how old you are. Okay, so we're going to, we'll do a hypothetical 100 and, no, we'll do 175. 175 pound. Uh, Women. 50 year old female. Do you know your body fat percentage accurately, like a DEXA scan? Well, if you do, yeah, then you can you put, can put in. it in there. Now, the, the e emphasis here is the accurately. Okay, let's say you don't. Okay. Um, okay, well, height is what? Uh, it's in inches. Uh, we'll do 64. I think that's 5 foot 4. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, what would be a good waist size for a for a woman? That's one hundred and seventy-five, maybe forty-five inches. Okay. Neck. I have no idea. Oh, sixteen. Sure, sixteen and hips would be like fifty. Fifty. L little round. Okay, so it's calculating a body fat percentage here of fifty-five percent. Yeah, that's a lot. That is a lot. Well, let's say that you did. Uh, there are different, a DEXA scan, you can actually Google DEXA scan and your city or the nearest large city to you. And a lot of times you can find universities or chiropractors or other places that will give you, they'll, they'll sell you a DEXA scan and it'll actually give you, there's, it, it, it'll like tell you how much your bones weigh. Yeah, it's really cool. And how much muscle is in your right arm, like the number of bones. It's really cool. But it'll it'll give you a accurate calculation of exactly what your body fat percentage is. Mm -hmm. You can also use the in body scales and things like that. Yep. And this section right here, please enter the measurements. This is fairly new to yep. this calculator. Um, it wasn't here not that long ago. What she had you used to be able to do was look at um, look at some pictures and kind of guesstimate. I think this is better. I think so too. Because it's not that hard to. To measure your neck, measure your waist, mm -hmm. measure your hips. And there's a lot of stuff going on in the background. That's one of the reasons why we really like Maria's calculator. Yeah. Okay, let's say, yes, I know what it is. It happens to be 40%. Okay. Well, we'll do the 55 because that's what we calculate. Okay, so what are your goals? So fat loss with PSMF is protein sparing modified fast. Now that is a little bit uh, complex to do. You have to be super um, careful and strict to do a protein sparing modified fast. Mm -hmm. You can do it, but you have to be like determined, right? Yep. So that's something that not everybody picks. Yep. Um, fat loss, we'll just say, hey, why don't we do fat loss? Okay, what's your activity level? Do you, uh, are you a desk job? Do you, you know, or moderate activity? I'm just gonna choose sedentary because it'll be the easiest to understand. Okay, so here's the results. So for fat loss, mm -hmm. and it, here again, she's got protein as a goal or a minimum. So in this case, he's recommending 72 grams per day. Mm -hmm. And how tall is that person again? Go back uh, up. Five foot four. Well, that's a short person, so that makes sense. Oh, but you know what? It doesn't even matter how tall they are because it's got weight and body fat percentage. I know, but it's I can understand yeah, it better if I can imagine what the person looks like. Yep. So thanks. <laughs> uh, now, uh, someone that's 175 pounds, yeah, these numbers might be just completely all over the place. Um, because, again, this isn't accurate for you. You would want to put your stuff in there. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so here we've got a hundred, or we've got seventy-two grams. Yeah. Um, total carbs twenty. If we change this to fat loss with PSMF, it protein, changed the calories and the carbs. Yeah, the carbs went down to ten. Oh, but the protein was the same. Protein stays That's the same. That's what you're trying to it point out. Always stays the same unless you want to build muscle or gain weight. Then it goes up. It's interesting. The body composition has higher fat, mm. whereas the fat loss 
And this is something that Miriam really wanted to talk about. Yes. What's the di- Why is this? This is actually probably lower than most people would recommend. Yeah. Well, and on keto, you hear high fat, moderate protein, low carb, yeah. right? But if you have fat right here, all you know, where you're trying to lose, you need to get fat adapted and you want to lose that fat. So the more you, the fat that you eat, you have to burn that still. So if you eat a little bit less fat, you're going to burn more fat here. Yeah. Because uh, oxidative priority two is. Well, well, it's first thing that's going to be burned. First is alcohol. Alcohol. Because it's a poison to your body. Second, ketones. exogenous ketones. Yeah. Well, any any ketones. Ketones, yeah. Ketones at all, yeah, will be Which burned is, second. If you take ketones, if you drink ketones, those will be used before your body uses fat off of your body. Period. Period. Yep. Um, then number three is glucose. Glucose. Also a some it it. It, it is toxic in high concentrations in our mm-hmm. body, so your body needs to take care of it first. Mm-hmm. Then protein. Yep. Then fat. So fat will come off of you last. Mm-hmm. So if you eat a little bit less fat, you're still going to burn that fat last that you ate or store it. And and I think it's frustrating because we it's really easy to say, oh, why is it like that? Why is it that we want to burn fat and it's the last thing? It's really great because our body knows how to take care of ourself itself. So all those other things it burns, it uses fat to store for famine. Our bodies take care of ourselves. And because we're in a plentiful time of life, we've tended to get overweight because we have so many foods readily available. Well, that's interesting because none of those things can be stored by the body except for except fat. for fat. And that and that's why? I mean, it's really cool. Our bodies are so amazing. But I can see, you know, it's frustrating. So go back to the calculator. Sorry. Oh, oh okay. Um, the calories uh, is another thing. So a lot of times, like 1,158, that those calories would not feel like it would fill me up, I think. But they're taking into account the fat that you have on your body, too. And That will also minus out. So that's part of the reason why sometimes people get a little confused with this calculator because it's like, oh, I'm only eating 1,100 calories. Give it a couple weeks, see how you feel, and you may see a difference. Well, what what do you do if you... Now, you're starting off keto. Mm -hmm. These numbers might be for after you've been doing it for a couple weeks. If you're starting it off and you're not feeling satisfied, Mm -hmm. what would be the best thing to do? Um, Well, salt, for sure. You always want to have salt, salt. but you're going to be satiated with fat. And protein as well. And protein, yes. Yeah. Well, especially when you're starting, like, okay, you're just starting. You you ate uh, a whole bunch of sweet rolls yesterday and you're deciding to do keto today. Mm -hmm. Your body will not be able to whole fat out of stores. Yeah, you're going to have to use the fat that you eat to give you energy. And that's what I was talking about, being fat adapted. Um, It takes a while, up to six months, for your body to become fat adapted for the the chemical changes cellular level of change to happen in your body where you're used to using fat for fuel instead of using glucose for fuel. And so it takes a while for you to transition over into that. And that's most important to get the fat yeah. in. But also, if your body is full, if you're feeling satisfied and you haven't hit your fat goals, oh, don't worry about don't it. Don't stress about it. Yeah, fat is not something that you need to get to. That's mm-hmm. like, okay, this is what she's, this is what Maria is recommending mm-hmm. for in order to hit, get a nice fat loss going. You notice she doesn't say weight loss. Yeah. It says fat loss. Um, and there's still fat here because, I mean, ideally, you wouldn't be eating any fat, right? Yeah, but that would be similar to the protein sparing modified fast because your fat's going to be lower. C76. Yeah. So that's fairly low. Which is actually higher than, um, oh, look. But, oh, there it is. So PSMF. It just day showed you all of them. Macros. So add two to three days a week. So normally you're doing this much. And two to three days a week, you're only doing 30 grams. That's actually really cool because then you could do it. I mean, it would be almost like um, fasting mimicking, right? So you would do two or three days of protein sparing and then you would 
do a couple more days of yeah. the regular fat macros. And that would really like speed things up. Yeah, and the idea with that is, yeah, you're using your fat stores, mm -hmm. but you, you're not doing it all the time. So it's yep. just having you go back and forth. So you're going to uh, not feel like you're starving as much. Oh, but look at the calories. That's, that's only, well, because it's, that's it. It's more it's protein. Higher protein. Mm -hmm. Almost no fat, just enough fat to get the vitamins. And this much fat, it's actually really hard to get that little fat when you're mm -hmm. eating Food. Meat. Mm -hmm. You have to eat some lean protein. So you yeah. have to have like chicken breast, um, salmon, tuna fish, stuff yeah. like that. Okay. So, well, that brings us to the next topic. Okay. Um, I don't know if we exhaustively explained that at one, but <laughs> I think we're ready to move Hopefully. on. Hopefully. So, anyway, do your stuff through there. Yeah. Like so it. you've done mm -hmm. a, you're, well, let's say that you're using keto chow and mm -hmm. you realize, oh, that's, that's what I wanted to talk about, um, about how, yeah. We actually did talk about it a bit, but I just wanted to reiterate that protein is what's going to fill you up. Um, if you, you, know, you want to make sure you get that. Okay. Ah. Okay, so you're doing, <laughs> you're doing um, a keto diet and you are trying to up your protein. Maybe you're using keto chow for one or two meals or even three if you really want to go nuts. Mm -hmm. But so what are some good ways to add protein into your diet mm -hmm. if you're using keto chow or anything with a keto diet. Okay. So depending on if you're looking for lean protein or just protein, you're going to still want to count whatever fat goes in with protein. If you have a ribeye, that's going to be pretty fatty. Sometimes yeah. I'll even cut off my fat. I know it's a waste of gold, but then I'm eating leaner. Yeah, you could just get a New York strip instead, but I know, but it's they don't have prime rib that's New York strip. <laughs> yeah, um, so you can with keto chow, you can add collagen, a couple scoops of collagen. You can add gelatin. You can add a, additional protein, like a regular protein powder that doesn't that's not keto chow. I wouldn't recommend may change the doing flavor two, or the yeah, scoops of keto chow unless you're going to have that be that you're having two of them well, at once? Yeah, I wouldn't ever do two scoops of keto chow. I would do two servings of keto chow mixed up, mm -hmm. and maybe you drink them both at the same time. But the reason for that is keto chow comes with all of the other vitamins mm -hmm. and minerals at the same time. It's not just a protein powder. Um, and so you don't want to do more than three keto chow servings in a day. Um, that's a little confusing for people, but just trust me on it. Yeah, because you don't want to overdose on those vitamins. Yeah. <laughs> um, and again, a keto chow serving is a meal. So if your idea is that you're going to do uh, keto chow for breakfast, uh, well, you could do keto chow maybe with some meat and stuff like that, but you wouldn't want to eat an entire meal of a whole bunch of stuff and then have a keto chow with the fat in it mm -hmm. as a snack. You could do keto chow as a supplement yep. to a regular meal without any fat in it. Yeah, well, you can also do keto chow with your protein sparing modified fats because it has yeah. the protein, but then if you didn't and the put the fat in it, um, you could use that with um, that PSMF. Yeah. So on the day that you're only supposed to be having 30 grams of fat, which mm -hmm. is, again, it's kind of hard to get that yeah, low kind of... with high, that high of a protein. Um, you could easily do that with keto chow that just has really a little tiny bit of, because you want, you want to have some fat. Mm -hmm. Some fat is required. It, it looks like Maria is recommending about 10 grams of fat per meal, at least, um, in order to be able to absorb the vitamins that yeah. are in the food. And so just maybe a little like a tablespoon of heavy cream or a little teeny bit of butter or something like that or a little avocado oil in with the keto chow um, that that would actually work really well i know a lot of people that have done a protein sparing modified fast with keto chow pretty mm -hmm. successfully yeah okay but you were talking about we got a little off, off sidetrack i can't remember so you we're we're using keto chow or we're just doing a keto diet and we're wanting to add additional protein. So we're looking yes. for good sources of protein to supplement. 
Yeah, so you can do like a can of salmon, you can do chicken breast, any any meat that you think of as lean, even like ground beef that's like the leaner ground beef. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is, if you get like the 90% ground beef, that just usually means you aren't draining as much stuff off. Yeah. Or you're not draining it at all. Frankly, one of the things that I really like to do is I like to put some of the savory keto chow, mm -hmm. uh, the tomato basil, or the taco soup, or even the beef soup paste, mm -hmm. added into ground beef, soaks up the liquids. Yeah, and, and it gives you a little bit extra protein the, too. The, the taco meat that we had recently, Yeah, that had the taco soup oh, mix nice. in it. Nice. I think I added three scoops to it. That was really good that. taco meat. Um, yeah, so uh, ground beef, you were saying, um, you were talking about different things. That... Yeah, tuna. Like, I mean, think about any meat um, that you can just add. Like jerky sometimes has sugar in it, but mm -hmm. sometimes it doesn't. Carnivore crisps. Like carnivore crisps. <laughs> okay, you could also just make mix up a non-keto chow, just regular protein powder that's low carbohydrate, and have an extra shake that's mm -hmm. just a protein shake. Yep. I mean, because, I mean, I usually just use keto chow as a shake and it's great and everything is fine. Um, I sometimes forget that there are other protein shakes out there that are, that are good. great. They just don't have all the nutrients that come with mm -hmm. keto chow. So they're not a meal. But if, you're, if your goal isn't to get a meal, mm -hmm. it's just to supplement protein, there are a lot of really cool options out there. Yeah, but you just want to make sure you find one without sugar. Yeah. Um, Joe has really been liking the Equip. Okay. That's a, it's a beef protein. You actually, Is that the one that I have? <laughs> yeah, we have some that we still need to open. <laughs> I'm, I have plans. Okay. Um, but yeah, just a regular protein powder. And well, and, uh, sometimes people will say, you know, like, how do I, how do I add more protein to my keto chow? And I say, well, do you have to add it to the keto chow? And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, you could always drink a keto chow mm -hmm. and then using the same blender bottle that you already have the from the keto chow, make a protein shake. Mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, okay. So they're, you're getting all the vitamins and everything else from the keto chow and all the minerals and all the, all the awesome fat and everything like that. And then you're just having a protein shake after it. Um, I guess that's the... Or uh, before it. Or before it. Um, although you'll probably be pretty full after doing both of those. I don't know. I would say a liquid for sure. So you could do a protein shake and keto chow ice cream. <laughs> then you would still be full. <laughs> you would still be full. make you really full. Okay. Um, I I personally really like the uh, can of salmon. When we did an experiment not too long ago, you were expecting not to like. This. I was expect. Well, I don't love salmon. I like salmon just fine. Okay. But I don't like go to a store and pick salmon like, as my ooh, first meal. Salmon. Our kids like really like salmon and we could eat it once a week at least but i think more than that is a lot for me okay but anyway so i was determined to do this experiment with chris and we were going to add a can of salmon at the end of each meal and i discovered each that day. E each day not yeah, each meal day. sorry <laughs> i thought oh i'm gonna get sick of this tomorrow because i don't love salmon but i actually really liked it yeah um, chicken and it was wings. fairly cheap. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, chicken wings. We just we just put some real yeah, salt, some salt seasoned on salt on it. It was good. Yeah. I put Tabasco sauce on it too. I wouldn't because I don't like hot sauce. Uh, but yeah, any, especially if you're just looking to supplement protein without increasing your fat, mm -hmm. then any lean meat is going to work. You could also, if you're using keto chow, again, the fat isn't part of the mix, so you can play with that. So if you wanted to, say, use a couple of quarter pound hamburger patties mm -hmm. to increase your protein, well, there's some fat in there. If you account for the amount of fat that's going to be in those hamburger patties mm -hmm. and deduct that from the amount of fat that you're going to add to keto chow, yep. that works great. And when it really gets down to it, um, this is one of the reasons why using a tracking program like Chronometer not to calculate your protein, mm -hmm. but to track your protein and your fat and everything like that is really cool because you can take the recommendations from Maria's calculator, put it in as a custom goal into chronometer, 
And then you're able to keep track of, okay, my goal for the day is 80 grams of protein. And my limit mm. for today on fat, what I'm kind of what I'm projected to get is say 75 or something like that. Okay, well, let's see. If I if I eat two of these quarter pound hamburger patties, then that'll give me this much protein and this much fat. Well, let's add in uh, two servings of keto chow. Well, let's see how much heavy cream would I need in order to get get myself close to my fat goal. Yeah. Okay. You know what? I, I'm only going to put in this much heavy cream yep. today. And that's, it's a really awesome tool to be able to use a tracking program like that. Yep. And I found that when I was um, doing it for a while, it was almost like starting keto all over again. I, I changed the macros in there to the goal weight as my protein. And then I wasn't stressed about calories. I wasn't stressed about fat. I only was trying to get under my carbs and hit the protein. And I was having, you know, realistic expectations for myself. And uh, I tried to only hit the protein and get under the carbs. And when I was trying to hit the protein, everything else just magically just was worked. the right thing. And so I'm like, wow, this is not that hard because I would type it in and it would be like, oh, it only bumped my fat up this much. And it's really low carb because your protein is low carb. It's not going to be very many carbs. And so when I was focusing on that, it was so much easier to stay under my carbs. And then I wasn't even worried about the fat because it just kind of went to the right place anyway. Yep. So it's kind of funny. I was worried that, oh, now I have to do all this math, blah, blah, blah. But I didn't. Well, and one thing that we forgot to talk about at the very beginning when we were talking about, you know, getting the right amount of protein is if you're having issues with hair loss mm -hmm. or brittle nails, things like that, that is a lot of times like really good indicator. You're not getting enough protein. Yeah. If you're done eating for the day and you're like, well, I am not hungry at all, but I'm over my fat amount. I probably need more protein. Now, what's the easiest way to make sure you're getting the right amount of protein? If in doubt, eat meat. <laughs> you just want to, if if all of this that we've been talking about is just like, you know what? I just don't have the mental thing for that. So we made keto chow to make doing a keto diet easy. Mm -hmm. so you mix it up. You don't have to worry about all the other stuff. But if you have the time and the cast iron pan mm -hmm. or the grill or whatever, if you want to just go full on carnivore, um, the amount of vitamins that are in meat was underestimated by the USDA. So even if you're tracking stuff in a chronometer, it's actually going to have lower, I mean, there's going to be more vitamins in the meat that you're eating than is shown in chronometer, just so that you're aware. Um, but if you just want to go on full on and just eat steak and steak and ground beef and make taco seasoning and, I mean, taco meat, don't buy taco seasoning at the store. Yeah, don't buy taco don't seasoning. Don't do that. Seriously, it's cumin or cumin? Cumin? Cumin. I, I think it's cumin. Cumin. That's um, how I say it. Some chili powder, salt, maybe some garlic and onions Onion. if you want to, and some pepper. That's how you make chili. I mean, not chili powder. Taco meat. It's really easy. Some people use less. Some people go a bit overboard on the amount of the cumin. Some people don't care about the measurements. <laughs> I literally, we went to Sam's Club and we got the giant, giant thing of the different seasonings that we use for taco meat. We tend to go through it pretty quickly because mm -hmm. I'll put in, seriously, I'll put, for that 10 pound thing of uh, ground beef that I did, I think I might have put in a quarter cup of cumin. And I keep putting red pepper flakes in there. And then everybody's like, this is too hot. <laughs> well, oh, sorry. Do we even have those red pepper flakes? Because <laughs> sometimes you like red pepper flakes. I yeah. mean, red pepper is not the same as chili powder. It's just great. So, you know. so great. Uh, but yeah, doing just eating a bunch of meat is probably the easiest thing to do if you have any doubts and you don't want to mix up keto chow. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Anything else you wanted to talk talk about regarding protein? Nope. Don't be afraid of protein. Okay. Everybody have a good day. Okay. Bye. Bye.